Hello and welcome back to part two of our in-depth series on bathroom renovations and the use of foam core backer boards. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend it. In part one, we discussed the ASTAM method that we use to test these backer boards with two commonly used anchoring systems. And we did this with the goal board using 12 by 12 and 2 by 2 tiles, which are the backdrops for the first two slides. As you can see from both of these images, the tests in both tiling systems on the goal board failed. Part one also established the essential role for wood blocking for safe, durable renovations. We discussed the flex motion of the backer boards, and we also highlighted that stud finders falter on tiled walls. Today, we're expanding our discussion to include the Weedy Board, Schluter Curdy Foam Backer Boards, and Permabase Cement Backer Boards. Join us in this next chapter as we continue to unravel the complexities of backer boards and advocate for renovation practices that ensure both safety and longevity. So let's get going. Why is this topic so important? The statistics from the Center for Disease Control, CDC's Steady Initiative, highlight the far reaching significance of my mission to use my YouTube channel as a platform to educate the public on safety and prevention. Considering the millions of older adults vulnerable to falls, it becomes clear that the need to enhance the safety of our home is both urgent and widespread. This is the test method we used. Please take a look at part one or take a picture of the QR code so you get more information on the ASTAM F446-19 test method. These are the four products we will discuss today. We are examining these backer boards without tile due to the significant flexing revealed in earlier tests with the goal board using the 12 by 12 and 2 by 2 tiles. Our evaluation includes the permabase cement board, to assess its performance, especially given that foam backer board companies often tout foam board as superior to cement board. We're taking a close look at the backside of these boards to see if they bend or damage easily. This makes us wonder, could such damage lead to water getting in and causing issues later? We've run parallel tests on half-inch drywall with the same anchoring systems and grab bar and I'll list that in the description below. We've received feedback on our part one video from a backer board industry executive who concurs that for safe grab bar installation, structural blocking is non-negotiable. It's an important emphasis given that some foam board manufacturers specify installation with just screws and not washers, impacting the board's ability to handle force. Our tests show that while boards can bend and flex a bit, the big problem is whether they can hold up against the push-pull of grab bars without breaking. We saw damage on the back of these bores, which made us worry. Now let's delve deeper and explore why wood blocking is essential for enhancing the durability of your installation. For our test, we selected the Permabase Plus cement backer board, which was readily available from our home improvement store. I want to be clear on the outset, this product successfully withstood the 250-pound test for five minutes. Each anchor's pull test was methodically conducted, taking around 20 minutes to complete, and this passed the ASTAM F446-19. In this picture here, we see the winget anchoring system, and there is no visible damage at all when this is under load. And even when we take the load off, you can see here there's no damage to this board at all. However, we did see this board flex, which we're going to show you a video of. And then here, this is the toggler system. One of the things that I did do is I did bring this weight up here almost, I think it was 290 pounds. At 250 pounds, there was no cutting in. But once I got up to 290, which exceeds the ASTAM test method and actually ADA standards, but you did see it slightly cut in at the heavier weight. But again, just want to reemphasize there was no cutting in at 250 pounds. This video reveals that while cement board also flexes, its strength surpasses that of foam board, preventing the anchors from pulling through. This results in more flex being transferred to the wall itself. In contrast, foam boards do exhibit flex, but the anchors often break through before reaching the pull weights that the cement boards can withstand. 
In our first installment, we conducted tests on gold board backer board with 12 by 12 and 2 by 2 tiles. Noticeable flexing was observed in our testing in the previous video. So we wanted to test the foam boards on their own and we'll first begin examining the gold board. This board did demonstrate some flexing up to a half an inch. The gold board was not able to withstand the weights required in the ASTAM test. And here you can see they actually started to break the board and cut through the board with the winget system. Next, we take a look at the toggler system in the goal board. And you can see here that the anchor itself is pulling right through the board. Here we can see the goal board does flex. Unfortunately, these aren't really accurate. Um, but I just wanted to put this ruler here for you to see some type of flex in the board. Moving forward in our examination, we now turn our attention to the weenie board subjected to the same test threats as the go board. In this image here, you can see that the wingets are literally pulling through the board. And with the togglers, again, the same thing. Because of these sharp edges, it's actually starting to cut right through the board. And you can see it's actually bottomed out here. Here you can see the wingets are pulling right through the board. Again, so this also did not pass the test. We noticed the weedy board did flex less, but the anchors pulled through the board. So again, wood blocking is required for this, and we didn't have enough strength behind of it to really show the flex in the board. Next in our detailed product review is the Schluter Curdy board. While Schluter acknowledges the need for wood blocking, many installation videos on YouTube seem to overlook this step, which is why we're examining this board further. When we look at the back during the testing, here you can see the wingets are just pulling right through it and the damage is significant. And the same thing here for the togglers. They're just tearing this fabric. And when we notice the flex here, you can see the, Sch the schluter Curdy board did flex a little bit more than all the others. And I just put these wedges to start to get the uh, thickness gauge. So here you can see the schluter Curdy board does not pass the test. And here, this is only 124 pounds and it's getting pulled right through the board. So as I stated, you know, we're not able to bring these up to the required 250 pound weight with these tests. This is a list of major foam core backer board manufacturers, and we're providing you QR codes. This column here is actually for the corporate documents library. And this one here is to the corporate YouTube channels. As we looked into the technical manuals from various companies, we were on the lookout for critical terms such as grab bars, anchor, blocking to identify the extent of the installation's instructions provided. Our search extends beyond our initial test to shine a light on the lack of proper instructions for installing grab bars and why it's so important to use wood blocking. Additionally, I'll share the links to the companies on the YouTube channels for you to explore. Actual instructional videos rarely demonstrate the use of wood blocking, suggesting a gap between best practice and common applications. We're just going to quickly highlight these manuals. So this is the goal board. There's the QR code. But here, as you see, we, these are the terms that we searched and we couldn't find any terms on go board. Next, we searched Weedy. Um, and again, this is their technical handbook, which is 116 pages. QR code will take you there. But here, there was no um, mention of grab bars. Anchor was mentioned 18 times, blocking four. And we did find one comment on page 69, I think, um, where it referenced a handlebar, which is a grab bar. And they did mention some blocking, but it's hidden on page 69. So that's all I'm trying to state is. On the Schluter um, Curdy board, this one, as I said, the grab bars was mentioned 12 times, anchors 10, blocking 10, detailed instructions on this, as well as they did have one um, video on YouTube that highlighted the anchor. Permabase is here just for your information in case you want to do some research on it. Then what we did is included additional ones. This is Dura Rock foam board. Again, the term search, nothing found there. This is Permabase's foam tile backer board. Grab bars and anchors, anchors are never mentioned. Blockings mentioned once. This is Lacrete Hydroban. Same thing. We couldn't find any mention of grab bars or blocking. The Hydroblock system. Um, this one here, we found blocking mentioned once. 
They do have a lot of videos. I didn't get a chance to go through all the detail, but we just wanted to give you these QR codes for you to go back and do your own research. So the big question is, is what do you do when you've remodeled your bathroom and you want to install grab bars and foam core backer board was used? I just want to reemphasize the stud finder option on tile. It's not accurate and reliable. We highly encourage you to go back to the first video and to look at E20. We'll just highlight this real quick. Up in this area where there is sheetrock, if your tile does not go to the ceiling, you can find studs and then use a level to go down and put in a grab bar. But when your tile goes all the way to the ceiling is when you really have a problem. So take a look at the previous video. So bridging the information gap, our in-depth review has identified a critical gap in guidance for manufacturers, especially concerning grab bar installations and wood blocking. Although many companies offer educational programs, these resources often omit important instructions for planning such installations. We urge manufacturers to address the shortfall and enrich their educational programs with detailed literature, instructional videos, and hands-on training that emphasize the full scope of installation, especially the use of wood blocking for enhanced safety and durability. It's time for the industry to step up and ensure all installations are performed with the utmost confidence and precision. So let's summarize our findings. Number one, inadequate support without blocking. When it comes to grab bar, our tests show that foam core backer boards on their own don't cut it. To prevent any give or flex when bars are under stress, wood blocking must be part of the installation process. Number two, despite the clear necessity for wood blocking, a concerning trend has emerged where both professional contractors and DIYers often bypass this crucial step. This isn't merely a minor oversight. It's a substantial lapse that cannot only compromise the safety within the critical space but also result in expensive retrofits to modify walls to accommodate grab bars later. After I finished part one of this video, I sent links out to many YouTubers that don't utilize blocking. One of the responses that I got back was, depending on the installation, if the homeowner has any thought about grab bars, we install the blocking in anticipation of this. The unfortunate thing is those people that don't mention grab bars, at that point, it's just too late and it's going to be a costly modification. The third is essential planning for blocking. The success of bathroom renovation lies in the planning, especially for elements like grab bars that are essential for mobility and safety. Planning for wood blocking should be as automatic as planning for plumbing and electrical, non-negotiable, and done up front. Solutions and calls to action. I'm urging leaders in the industry, manufacturers, and officials to work together on the insights from these videos. I hope a trade group will form a committee to review our findings and propose new industry standards, potentially updating building codes to require wood blocking for grab bars. We need to look ahead, not just stick to what's always been done to ensure our community's future safety. Let's act now to reduce preventable harm and build a safer space for all. One of the things that I want to highlight here is the International Code Council. These QR codes will take you to their site, but they have a free 14-day search tool that allows you to search all of the codes throughout the United States. What I was able to find was in section R237, there's actually an aging in place design and fall prevention for new construction. And it's very interesting. They, they really put in place blocking as a requirement. I highly encourage you just to take a look at this site. I want to thank everyone for watching. Please participate in our community by posting any comments, giving us a thumbs up or suggestions. Please share this video with anyone in your community. Click the subscribe button for future videos and updates. We want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot.